Hi, Randy. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. It is great to uh, see my friend Mark Gottlieb. And uh, we were just talking before we started recording that it's been at least five years that we've actually been together. But uh, I've been hearing about you, learning about you. You've been very kind to our ministry and so on. And and uh, anyhow, welcome, Mark. To uh, Thank to you, Randy. Piece. Let me tell you a little bit more about Mark. Um, I'll just say this. He's one amazing man. And I'm going to summarize some of the highlights of his life. After undergraduate studies at the Evergreen State College in Olympia, Washington, uh, Mark earned two master's degrees in technical areas from Stanford University. From there, he moved to Washington, D.C. area, where he worked with SRI International, assisting a governmental agency on its technology. And he also taught some grad courses at a school where I got my law degree George Washington University on the side. Didn't know that. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In 1985, he launched his own technology firm called Design Tech International, which focused on the design and production of innovative products in the consumer electronics field. His business was really a huge success. He made lots of money, millions, and he employed over 100 people at a time. And then created another company, Logic Mark, in 2006 that he later sold to a private equity group. Mark, on, on the, the more personal side of life, is happily married, as he describes it, to his wife, Sharon. We've met her. Together, they have four wonderful children and now 12 grandkids. He's very active in his local church. And for fun, he enjoys being an incredible photographer and 3D designer and printer expert. Uh, he's traveled to 88, this, this is amazing. He has traveled, believe it or not, to 88 countries in the world. He's even listed in the Guinness Book of World Records. Is that as an underwater violinist? That is true. That was from my days when I was about about 18 years old or so. I made an underwater violin. No, we, 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 may, we may need to talk about that. I, I used to play the violin, but never underwater. I can't imagine yeah. what that would be like. So, But on a negative side, let's just talk about something that we're going to spend probably more time talking about. A little over three years ago, in the middle of his travel and other activities, Mark had a very tragic mountain biking accident that left him paralyzed at the time from the neck down. But I've seen some recent news coverage of you and that apparently after many hours of physical therapy and work and diligence and the help of some technology, you're actually able to walk again. I am walking. I walk and I drive and I get around. How about that? I love it. I love it. Well, anyhow, again, we thank you, Mark. It was a long intro, but you, you've done a lot of things in life. You, you need a long intro. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you talk about being active. I want to just start out. You talk about being active in your church. What, what church do you attend locally? Bert, yes, yeah, it's, it's called Burt Community Church. Okay. All right. In Northern, in Northern Virginia here. Awesome. Awesome. Anyhow, so you're, you know, you're active in your, your church. Obviously, you're, you're a follower of Christ, right? Absolutely so. And I have been for about, gosh, about 40 years, maybe now. How did that start? Well, I'll give you the short version. I was actually raised in a Jewish family, which yep, were actually yep. atheists. Wow. And so, like most Jews in America, um, most Jews are actually atheist Jews. We're actually culturally Jewish, but we don't know much about God. Sure. And so I grew up that, that way, and I, w I went through, you know, college and grad school not knowing god at all i came out to washington here and long story short i met a girl she gave me a bible i started going to church a little bit here and there and it was a slow process i kind of you know was was checking it out more and more and eventually i read a book called darwin on trial by mm. a guy named philip philip johnson and i never actually finished the book i read i read halfway through the book and realized i was lied to all my life growing up that evolution is a fact when it's not a fact evolution is the only theory out there 
that if you don't want to believe in God, there's not much else to hang your hat on than other than something like mm. evolution. Yeah. So that's why the world hangs on that. But it has so many holes in it yeah. that it's it's almost embarrassing. Yeah. So it was that that kind of took me over the edge there. And I finally realized, gosh, there there really is a God out there. And I began reading my Bible. I began studying more. I began asking more 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 questions and the more i looked into it the more sense it made and the and the more peace i was with it and so yeah so it took, took me several years to get to that oh, point. really I, it didn't happen in just a day or two it took no it years. took me several, several years and i really the more i looked at it the more i researched it the more i checked out prophecy and all those things the better it, it stood, and so I am. I'm standing firm on on God's word. I believe the whole word of God, and from Revelation back down to, to Genesis in the beginning, I believe all of it, and it's all the inspired word of God. And I am trusting God that when He wrote a book, He can get it right. <laughs> that is so good, but it is like you. I mean, you you're very much. I mean, you're very intelligent. And uh, so it makes sense to me that it would take a period of time for you to really study this thing methodically. And then when you do come to the conclusion, it, it's it's something that you are absolutely sure of. And there you go. And that, that is so cool. Uh, that That's a great story to tell to so many others that just, man, well, I'm spiritual. You know, that's, that's the modern way of saying, yeah, I believe there's something there, but that's about it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that is so great. So, I mean, you've done a number of businesses. Uh, again, you've had a marriage, you've got children, you got grandkids. Um, you're amazing. I see your your entries on Facebook from time to time of these innovative things you do. You just don't quit thinking and working on stuff, do you, buddy? But, but you know, we have a creative God who created the whole the whole universe, right? Yes. And you said he made us in his image. So I'm taking that actually seriously and looking to create as well. So I love to create things, whether it's you do working, metalworking, 3D printing. I love to create things, and I, I and I ask God to help me be creative at, at the things I do. So I'm enjoying that. But again, a little over three years ago, a lot of that came to a halt. I would imagine, at least temporarily, yeah. didn't it? Temporarily, it did. Yeah. Well, didn't that really try your faith in God. I mean, God, you know, you're sovereign. You allowed this. To, how, I, you, you love us. What, 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 did, what went through your, probably a lot of things, yeah. but how, how did well, you, you, how'd you deal with that? Uh, to, 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 you to know what? Know. It's, it's hard to believe, but it's, it really is true. The minute I had my accident, I was at peace. I truly did not go through these heart wrenching things of God. Why am I here? And this and that. Um, I talk to God a lot, but let, let me just tell you, there were many things in my life which actually led up to this, okay? Okay. So, I mean, I, I've had cancer three times b before my accident. Okay. Um, so I dealt with that. Um, I had a business, one of the first businesses I had ran for 18 years and did very well for the first 14, 15 years. Okay. And then it crashed and burned and I, and I actually lost everything. Wow. So I've dealt with God many times and I've seen him come, come through. And, um, you know, I got to tell you, I have already learned to see when, when um, bad things happen, it doesn't mean God, God was actually asleep at the wheel at all. God is very involved with bad things. God even sends bad things our way. The Bible has many, many examples of passages. In fact, I'll give you a few because it's important to know. Sure, yeah. because, if, because if you don't believe God allows and or sends bad things your way, when they come your way, you're going to be totally taken by surprise of God. I thought I was doing the right things. What's going on? So there's like... Um, there's there's a passage isaiah 45 7 i form the light and i create the darkness i bring prosperity and i create disaster mm. i the lord do all these things wow. there's a great example where god does good things and bad things mm -hmm. um there's another passage that he, he um he says 
um, if calamity is in the city, is it not I who have brought it? Says mm. the the Lord. So we have a God who who uses bad things in our lives to hone our skills, to hone our attitude towards mm. Him, to make us seek him more he says in the bible those who seek me will find me when they seek me with all of their heart that's right but but you know you don't you don't seek god in times of good times usually so yeah. it's in the struggles of life that we tend to want to seek god mm -hmm. so so just to answer back to the question you originally sure. asked yeah, yeah what did i feel like in the hospital when i was lying so when i started out in the hospital when i actually woke up i was paralyzed from the neck down nothing moved except for my right foot had signs of life which is a good sign yeah, because yeah. that means you're not you're not a complete sure quadriplegic there is some hope there so it took almost a week before it was over a week until my right hand moved at all wow and nothing else moved but my right foot and then eventually my right hand began to show signs of life um but you know from the first day in the hospital i made a commitment you know that big, huge TV screen they put in hospital rooms for everybody these days? They give you this big, flat-screen TV right in front of your bed there that you can watch. Sure. I never turned that thing on once, not once in the 40 days I was in the hospital, because I knew if God has something this bad for me, he wants my attention. Wow. And I don't want to miss it. The last thing I want to do is hear about what's going on in the world and how falling apart it is. In fact, COVID started basically the week I, I the week I ended up in the hospital. Mm -hmm. So it, it really did. They started beginning talking about having to lock down things and yeah. this and that. So I became intentional finding out what does God really want to get my my attention for so i literally i mean it's you cannot imagine meeting someone who did not hit that on button for the tv once in 40 days so that was the first step okay. make sure i hear what does god want me here for right. number two is guess what there's about 20 nurses coming in throughout the week all they're coming in all day long on different shifts here and there yeah, sure. so i i realized gosh I have a captive audience. I'm not going anywhere and they're coming in and take, taking, taking care of me. So I had a prayer, um, a, um, what, what do you want to call it? I mean, basically every one of those gals and guys who are coming in, I asked them point blank. So what can be praying for you about? I can't do anything else, but I can sit here and pray. So you were able to talk. You were able to talk even though oh, yeah, you... I could, I could talk. You couldn't yeah. move much, but you could talk. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And you know, to make matters worse, I stutter in life too. So I'm thinking, God, okay, I have a hard enough time. And after the accident, I, my stuttering got worse. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> What's that about God? But you know, okay. So anyway, so I had a prayer ministry going on in the hospital there. Wow. And, uh, and we actually had several prayers answered in the hospital. Oh, and I actually so shared the gospel with um, a woman in the hospital and so I was trying to figure out okay God what do you have in mind for me now what's yep. going on here yeah. what what's your plan That's so good. and I had learned that in life over the 20 some odd years before yep. so those 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 bouts with cancer the times when my business went under and you have to actually realize when you've worked 18 years in a business you work 70 80 hours a week you put everything you had into it you guaranteed loans with the banks and this and that wow. and your business goes under that is really a challenge that is and, a challenge yes and sir. so that was my real biggest heartbreaking moment in life okay. where i really sought god so ending up paralyzed from the neck down the hospital was that isn't good but i I've, I've been in bad spots before wow. so i knew the response is not woe pitiful me the response is god what am i what are you doing here yeah what do you want me to do to do how can i be of use to you when i'm here god heal me and so i i went all this down that path but it wasn't it wasn't a woe pitiful me kind of thing is whoa god what are you doing so you just wanted to find out you weren't you you, you trusted yeah. him through it which is incredible and that you know the romans 8 28 
you know, all is, things is work together good. for good. To it those that know and it love doesn't the say Lord. it doesn't say all things are good, does it? No, it says work together for good to those that trust the Lord and and are called according to His um, yeah, who love, to love, spirit, love God who and love the Lord. according to His purpose. You know, just yeah. let me just give you a quick illustration. Uh, we had a family gathering in Mackinac Island area a couple weeks ago, and as we were driving there, Marcia had developed it. And I'm very unusual for her a backache. No bummer. I mean, yeah. to the point that she actually would scream when she had to move. I mean, she's very sensitive. Yeah. And, uh, it's kind of amazing that she gave birth to 12 kids, but uh, <laughs> I know. Those, that was painful too. But anyhow, so this back of hers was really hurting. I mean, I thought, oh, this is, we've been praying about this family gathering for months and here it, she gets this backache. But she said, you know, the scripture says in First Thessalonians 5.18, give thanks in all, in all circumstances. Yes. It doesn't say feel thankful. It does not so, say feel. It says yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a commandment. Yeah, that's, right. that's right. That's right. So it's a did. commandment. It's not a just, you know, yep. all things were together for good kind of stuff. No, it's a commandment. In all things, give thanks. That's right. And so, so I was giving thanks. So, yep, you did. And that's what she did. So anyhow, just a little bit more on her story. It's kind of cute. Um, so someone suggested she goes to the hot tub. Yeah. In the in the hotel up there in Mackinac City. So she did, and she, oh, painfully. And there's two ladies. There's a woman and her daughter in the hot tub already. And Marcia gets down into the hot tub. And, oh, and one of the ladies said that she had, you know, back issues too. And they started talking about it a little bit. And then Marcia, who was an evangelist, shared her faith with these two gals, a woman and her daughter. And they both received the what Marcia was telling them. And yeah. they both prayed to receive Christ right there in the hot tub. There you go. That. That's how now. God works. And, and then, God and, and then Marcia's clear. backache goes away. Oh, he went away too? Oh, yeah. So she could ride the bike around the island the next day. Wow. I mean, it's he, like God yeah. does do these things for yeah. for a bigger purpose. But man, you've had some huge uh, owies in your life, my friend. And yeah. yet you you I see it in your in your countenance. You're 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 trusting our Lord despite the cancers, the business situation, and, and then this thing, you don't give up trusting. Well, you know, the the goal here is to actually finish well. Yeah, that's right? good. Yes. So if you are going through life and things get really bad and they're going south and you end up whining, is whining finishing well? No. no. You become bitter? No. To, to, to finish, you want, when you end up in heaven, where you, by the way, we're going to have a new glorified body, which will be better than the one I'm in now, where yeah. my left side is, is half is, is half paralyzed today. Okay. Um, and, you know, we're going to have a new body, but you want to have them say, well done, good and faithful servant. And you've only got a handful of more years to show him how how well you're going to actually finish yeah. because you've only got 10 20 30 40 years left in your life mm -hmm. you have eternity to live the rewards of living a, a well done life on this earth yeah. and well done does not include complaining and whining that's that's well put and this life is short i mean it's unbelievable that's actually what got my attention in high school i did the math yeah how, how many Infinity. days how many yeah. days? 70 years. It's 25,550 days, roughly. Right. And how many days is infinity? Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Exactly. And uh, so, I mean, I thought, wow, I it, my life is short. And uh, if God loves me and has a plan for my life, I'm in. And I have no regrets giving my life to him. Have I been perfect since then? Of course not. But he does, like you point out, he gives pain to our lives, because not because he hates us, no. because he loves us yeah and uh, there are times where we need we need that pain i do you remember what c.s lewis said he said that that god whispers to us in our pleasure but he shouts to us in our pain right yeah you know it was it's the apostle paul no one can can say that that guy didn't do all the right things that's true once he got saved and he got his life turned in the right direction yeah he did all the right things and man was that guy beat up 
you know, I, I have a little phrase that I kind of say is that God loves broken people. And you can see it in the, the in the Bible. He uses broken people all the time. And those people he brings on board who aren't really broken yet, he tends to break them. That's, you know? that's the truth. And, and Paul asked the Lord to actually take away the, quote, thorn in his side three or four times. Three and, times, and, yeah. And he didn't. And Paul's response in, in actually writing that is, Okay, I acknowledge I have a thorn. I brought it up to him, and two yep. more times in case he didn't hear it the first time. But after that, okay, we move on. Whatever that thorn is, he I never mean, God, mentioned yeah, again. God and he says, didn't whine about that that's ever right. again. In fact, you know, God tell. I mean, it's there's so many things in Scripture that that are counterintuitive. I mean, he says to Paul, he says, "My strength is made perfect in, in weakness." weakness. I know. Uh, wait a minute. Didn't you mean it somehow survives my week? No, 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 no. It, it's made perfect in weakness. Then Paul says, okay, then I'm going to glory in my weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and difficulties. Because when yes. I'm weak, then I'm strong. And that's it. You, and that's you, my friend. You come across that same way. I'm so proud of you as your brother. I, am, I have read the Bible quite a few times. And I, and I have, I have, you know what? I, I'm not a guy who can remember every every detail, sure. but I get the concepts. I'm I'm a concept guy. Yeah, you are. You the are. concept in the Bible is life is not going to be easy, and it actually says says that. You know, Christ Christ says, "In this life, you will have many tribulations." That's right. So he's already told us that. Yes. So why are we surprised when they happen? I mean, well, we're, we should, well, we're Americans and we deserve Americans, comfort and yeah. peace. Yeah, right. We already have comfort and we already have peace yeah. to a large extent. Yeah. We're just wanting it to be perfect. That's and right. in this life, you will have many, many tribulations. Yeah. So how we respond is everything. I love it. Is You know, God, God knows there's a problem coming each of our lives coming up at a certain point in the next months or year, there's a big issue coming our way. He's not surprised by it. But hmm. I can tell you how you respond to that issue coming in your life, how you respond is everything before the Lord. Yeah. The issue itself is secondary. He's wanting to improve you, to change you, to grow you, to, you know, to make you a better person. Hmm. That you happen to be half half paralyzed as i am in th this case um is kind of secondary it's how we respond that we are in that condition is everything right. that 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 really is what the response is what he's looking for not the fact that we you know we we lost a leg a loss to this or we have cancer or, we're, or that whatever it is that's secondary to our response wow so, yeah, it, I mean, we can say that and, and know it up here, but at the feeling level, at the trusting level, yeah. It, it, what would you say to someone who's, who's watching this, listening to this, who's really undergone some major either financial, relational, um, physical, some sort yeah. of trauma? And, yeah. you know, they've been a They said, look, I've been a Christian. I've been following you faithfully, Lord, and you let this happen to me. And what would, what, how would you talk to them? How would you encourage them? Well, you know, uh, <laughs> so I am a little bit more, more brute force in the way I respond in general okay. to things. Sure. So I'm not going to be overly brute force, but I would tell you, this is your moment in life to up your, up your, up your Christian walk one level which it needs to probably get to. And that level is to literally just, to put the whining aside and to change the whining into talking to God, mm -hmm. meaning that the, the best past, the best examples in the Bible are, 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 are King, are King David in the Psalms, for instance. Okay. Mm -hmm. He had a lot of things. He's very clear. He's very open about it. Yep. God, my enemies are all around me. They're attacking me. They hate me. They, this, they, that, but he doesn't dwell on that. He goes right into it, but I will praise you. Mm -hmm. I will come seek your comfort. He, he, he goes to the Lord. So if you are in the pity party mode of your, of your life, it's because you're not, you're not following the advice in the Bible, which is go to God with your issues. He can handle them. So I talk to God every day. God, isn't there a little bit more 
healing you want to do. Like I can walk now, I can drive. My left hand goes up to about here, but it doesn't go higher. Okay. Okay. My I, my hands don't work great, but they work. My left leg barely clears the ground, but it does clear the ground. So I have conversations with God of God. Let's go a little further, okay? But I don't whine, and so I am. I am. I need to be content in all things. So mm -hmm. at whatever stage I'm at with my with my issues. I learned to be content. Am I through with praying to God about God? There's a bit more you could do. No, no, I'm okay with that. Yeah, Paul may see. only have asked three times, but I bet he asked a few more. I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, God isn't upset if you continually kind of, you know, ask for a little more. But you need to be thankful and content. So I thank God literally all day long. Hey, God, thank you that the pain isn't as great today as it was mm -hmm. this last many months and years because I have I still have lots of pain issues uh -huh. and there's some days it's better than others okay uh -huh. Uh -huh. in fact it's actually nerve pain so there's yeah. not much you can do about it is sure. the worst part but um so but I thank God when I can do things uh -huh. and I thank him for what he's done even though I still have a lot of issues so to answer the question, mm -hmm. if you're focused on the whiny side of life, you're not you're not within what God asked you to do. He asked you to be thankful in all things, as you pointed out, Randy. Yep. And he asked us to be grateful all throughout the Bible. There's a lot of passages about being grateful. Are you being grateful for all the things he has got you? It's a great mm -hmm. song. Count count your blessings yeah. one by, by one. Yeah. I count them. I spent probably more time in my prayer with the Lord, thanking him for my family, thanking mm -hmm. him for the things he's done, thanking mm -hmm. him for the health he has given me, mm -hmm. thanking him for this, that, and the other things. So you need to realize mm -hmm. your life is not easy and yeah. life will get worse. As we get older, we all start having more and more issues. That's true. And your eyesight will begin to go. Your hearing yeah. will begin to go. Um, your back will hurt more when you're older than it is when you're younger. Mm -hmm. So issues are going to come. It's the way it is. Okay. So to finish well, you need to focus on God. You need to focus on the blessings you have. And, you know, don't be whiny. That's all. Okay, I mean, that's good. All I can tell you. Okay. Is that, yeah. Don't worry. I cannot think of a passage where he tells us to whine about our issues. <laughs> They're not there. He says, "Bring your 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 burdens to him." Yeah. And I mean, he we, will we can, comfort you. We can, like you say. I mean, David did uh, have those times where he lamented. I mean, he yeah. had he would he would lay out. I mean, he didn't try to hide his feelings he said, this really hurts and yeah but then he made that transition because he put his eyes on the lord and but i will praise you trust yeah and i will lift your name up That's and right. i will glory in you yeah. and he goes on and on he he, he never stops at the whiny stuff yeah, that's right that's really but we still we we can't just ignore the the, the reality of it we got to face the reality but then yeah. go on from that point so that's good so, you know, you talk about family, happily married to Sharon, and you got four kids and grandkids, 12 grandkids. And two um, more on the way. Hey, that's awesome. I have a long way to catch up to you. Yeah, but you got to keep working on it. at it, buddy. But um, anyhow, but how is that? I mean, obviously, you know, your your physical condition and so on, that has to impact, you know, your marriage, your family, your parenting. How how have how have you been able to navigate through that whole process? You know, it impacts almost everything. Yeah. I'll be honest. Yeah. But I but but I do it anyway. So when I'm with the kids, you know, I'm, I'm having fun. And when I'm with the grandkids, I'm having fun to the best I can. I can't get down on my knees and yep. play with yep. them easily. Sure. Hard to get back up. <laughs> um, but, you know, we do things that, that we can do. And yet, and everyone in my family knows what the issues and the the constraints are. Sure. So you just you do the best you can with what you got, yeah. and um and you and you and you keep a cheery attitude, and yeah, you, you do the best you can. And yeah. like as you mentioned, I had lots of hobbies and activities b beforehand. There are several I cannot do anymore. I cannot 
scuba dive anymore. I used to dive a lot all around the yep. world. Yep. So I can't dive for all, for all kinds of reasons. Mm -hmm. And there's other things I can't do. I used to go on trips where I get to get in, that, get, get, get in and out of large boats into Zodiacs and go off on shore and do things like that. I couldn't get in and out, in and out of a Zodiac boat anymore if I if I try to be really awkward but I can do other things so I still travel I just I just took a trip to Africa this last year and to the Amazon this last year my wife and I were recently in Iceland and my son and I are going to Madagascar in about six weeks and I just arranged my trips to be more things I can handle I always make sure I'm in a you know a, a I'm um, in this case a jeep as opposed to a zodiac boat sure, sure. you know so yeah. okay I, i'm kind of more land bound than i used to be sure. and so you you work with what with with what you got i i can still work in the wood shop so i do and i hire a guy to come in once a week a young guy comes in once a week for the day and takes care of a list of things that I used to do around the house that I can't do anymore. Mm -hmm. And when I have things where I have to move something or I need help doing something, I save that for that day. Mm -hmm. And he comes in and we do it. That's great. Well, you know, just the one final area that I'd like to just explore a little bit with you, you know, just the status of the church in America. Uh, you're, you know, you're active involved in your local church, obviously, but such a, you know, it's our ministry course is about revival and spiritual awakening, which yes. we so desperately need. What, what, what's your sense of where things are heading from that perspective? Are we, is the church in America experiencing some growth or some sense of revival that actually we're seeing in China and Iran yeah. and some of the nations that are being, where Christians are being persecuted? Well, right. what's your sense of the American church today? Well, if I can first say that before I get to the church answer, that the country answer is really important. The country is becoming a pagan country. Yes. Whereas it was a Christian nation for 300 or for 200 and some odd years. Okay. And well, I mean, you could argue various points. Yeah, but there, overall, there, were time, there, were, the, there were definitely times of, and we won't get into those, but, yeah. but, but anyhow. overall, we were yeah. a Christian nation. Yeah. We worked around Christian christian judeo concepts etc right. yeah. in the last 20 30 years that's gone the other way yes. so we're, be we're becoming a we're becoming a a a a pagan na nation mm -hmm. the good news in all of that is um there's always a remnant and god and god works through a remnant and he always has yes and the christian church over the last hundred years has been an easy church. People would, were Christians who didn't have to work hard at it. It's true. People were Christians because everybody expected you to be. Mm -hmm. So you just you went to church whether you really believed or not, and you called yourself a Christian. Yep. Yep. So going 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 forward, people aren't going to call themselves a Christian just to kind of get along with the culture. It'll be the opposite. You don't want to be, be called a, a Christian to get along with the culture. So the Christians of the future in America are going to be the hardcore Christians. Amen. These are the ones who are following Christ, not just the ones who just check the box on Sundays. Yep. So the numbers will get less as they are in some ways, but the quality of the Christians will get stronger. Mm -hmm. And with the persecution from the, from the pagan culture, you're going to see a lot of wonderful acts of God going on I in great so. and mighty ways. I agree. Is he going to choose to do it through small revivals or big ones? I don't know. Yep. Um, he can choose a big one if he wants, or he may do it through a lot of smaller ones and get the attention of smaller group groups of people he yep. here and there. Yep. But God is not through with, with Christians as a whole. That's true. And America, you know, has stuck, has has snubbed god for the last 30 40 50 60 years a lot hmm. so god's patience with america may be heading the other way yeah who knows yeah um or he may not be done with us yet as a nation to do great and mighty things yeah. for him as a whole but christians in america there will always be the hardcore serious christ following christians no matter what the numbers are we're hmm. going to be there amen Anything you'd want to add before we close? 
No, I mean, I, I think we covered a lot of things. There's a lot more we could cover. Uh, it but has we, been we've such said a, a lot for me to talk with you. If I, if, I, if, if I can say anything, it's thank you, thank you, Randy, and for pe- for being someone that is out there continually, you know, sharing your faith and mm-hmm. praying for revival and praying for this for this country over and over and over and over when it looks like it's not quite happening the way you yeah. you wished it were. Although, but you are you are you are being faithful yeah. for doing the right thing, even if it's not working the way you want all all the time. So thanks for doing that. Yeah, well, you're you're welcome. And just and Marcia small, too. Thank you yeah, for her too. Yeah, well, we appreciate that. But just a small bit on that is in the last few months we've we've connected with this Gen Z group. Okay. Um, and uh, we've you talked about it in some of our writing and so on. But they are traveling across the country. They got sixty of them that they've sent out across the country to share their gospel, the gospel with people. And they look to us because we've been praying for revival for a number of years. They say, look, it's because of your prayers that this group has just been growing. Cool. I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds of them, but only 60 going across the country this summer. But but it's just amazing. They are they are in love with Jesus. There you and go. Really encouraging. Very yeah. encouraging. So we so see the, something happening. I would tell you the quality of the of the christian life in america the meaning the 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 quantity of the quality christians who yeah. really are following christ i think can actually grow i because, think it is because with persecution yes you have to decide just to fall for yep. for, for the for the 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 worldly stuff in life yep. or stand firm on the other side yes. at which point the you know it just you'll stand you'll stand stronger and that's what we see in China and some of these other countries sure. where they're persecuted. They say, I'm going for it. And then bring it on. And then people see that. They say it must be real. And then they come to faith. So hopefully yeah. we're going to see I, again. I don't like persecution for me or my no, kids or grandkids. Right. But as you say, this life's short. And if we have to d- have a little discomfort to see God win big, let's go. go How about it. closing us in prayer, brother? Sure. All right. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much for the time with Randy on the on the conference here today, Lord. I I do appreciate that, and it's great to hear that he has great things happening in his in his life and and, and his his family's life as well, Lord. And Lord, I want to I want to actually lift up our country and say, yes. Lord, yes. bring revival, Lord. This this country was actually built on. Mm-hmm on christian foundations lord which have been eroded over the years i know but lord bring back a revival in this country so that we can honor you and everything this this country is doing lord and thank you for this time this morning lord i lift up everyone who's actually listening to this um broadcast here lord that they may have found something just one little element of what i said or andy said on the Mm -hmm call here today lord that they can use and latch on to and use to impact them so that they can impact you or impact the world for your glory lord Amen. so that you would be honored in everything that happens here so lord we love you dearly we lift up the name of jesus christ and say we love you jesus amen amen oh yeah. thank you so much mark just great being with you again god richly bless you my brother thank you thank you god bless you randy bye-bye